back to 1986, and this was the best-selling single in the country. Don't forget me when I'm gone. Who could forget? Those vocals, that sound, the songwriting skills that would give Alan Frew the staying power to last three decades in the business. There comes a moment when my heart must stand alone On this lonely path I've chosen Like a house that's not a home in 2010, Fru co-wrote a song that became synonymous with the Winter Olympics in Vancouver, I Believe. I sat here and just churned over the idea of thinking about the isolation that athletes go through and, you know, the loneliness and the isolation that can happen to a traveling musician is probably very similar to the hockey rinks at 4 a.m. in the morning for the, the little figure skaters or the hockey players and whatnot. So I tried to encapsulate that idea of the solitude and uh, but then take it to this payoff of you know of glory That song was on the lips of every Canadian who watched the Olympics. Massive. I mean, to the point of ad nauseum. You know, you know, <laughs> people would say, if I hear that song again, I'm going to jump off a bridge. But that's a hit song, right? And I always like to remind people that a hit song is not a hit song because everybody loves it. It's a hit song because enough people love it to make it a hit. Here goes nothing. And it's a throwback to hit songs that forms the basis of Fru's latest album, 80 to 90 Rewind, a compilation of cover songs recorded between 1980 and 1990. My manager and I, we sat down and we talked and I had talked about maybe doing some 60s, like the British invasion of the 60s. He was the one that said, now nah, why don't you do the 80s? And I thought, well, that, that makes sense and it's believable. Welcome to your life. Recapturing the 80s vibe beloved by so many, but perhaps also grabbing a new audience, discovering a different generation of music. Just by me, Alan Frew of Glass Tiger and the voice that you guys know, suddenly does Madonna, or does Peter Gabriel, or does Tears for Fears, already it creates a level of interest. There's something of interest there. And, um, and it's been, uh, it's been great. But finishing the album became a true test of Fru's passion to sing. Last summer, a near tragic event happened. I had just finished the last song, the last syllable of the last word of the last song. I'd finished it and we sort of said, we're done, yeah, we're done, it's fin it's, it's over. And we all sort of had a three-way hug and said, great. And I went to bed and had a stroke. A stroke that completely paralyzed Fru's right side for a few days. In the months afterward, Fru completed his album and began rehearsals for his upcoming tour, all the while trying to recover. And each time I get a little stronger and I go for the big note and it's there. And Because you have the fear, hang, you have the cloud hanging over your head. <gasps> Can I go for that big note? Am I going to have a stroke if I go for that note? And you, you can't live like that, so you have to just work through it. That's what I was curious about, is if it made you have to alter how you live at all. I can't do it. I just, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big singer. Uh, you know, I, I, no disrespect to other singers, what I mean is I use a big voice. I'm in the top range. I'm not a folk singer who can weave in and out of, you know, really soft, subtle things. I, I come at it as big as I can. And um, that's the only way I know how. Someday you'll be shedding your tears and then you'll cry over me. It's what he's known for 30 years. Now, Fru says he's still hungry because it remains all about the music. I'll come and play for 10 people or 10,000. You know, whoever's there and shows up, I'll be there. 
Simple as that. Yep. That's all it is. Just a guy singing songs. And whoever cares enough to come out, I'll be there.